Stone. I'm from Arnold, Maryland, which is right outside of Annapolis. It's a 1960 Willys wagon. It's a Chevy 350 V8, turbo hydro 400, automatic transmission. We bought it about 75% done. We, uh, uh, in the last six or eight months, have completely redone the suspension. We did a lot of fit and finish um, work with the body. A lot of little things just to, just to get everything done. Marlon Boschinger, I'm from Redline, Pennsylvania, which is only about seven, eight miles from here. The truck is a 1964 model, and I bought it in 1965, it had 10,000 miles on it. Now it only has 54,000 on it. Uh, I used it on the farm. I didn't use it too much, but when I did, I pretty much abused it. But it's still in pretty good shape. So. My family and I come up from uh, Southern Maryland. We met my twin brother here with his family from, uh, they're from South Jersey. He, runs a, he, he built his CJ. He's been helping me build on my CJ. Mine's an eight. Worked really hard on the cage. My wife is paranoid about us. Uh, we're willing with the kids. We take the kids out a lot for wheeling. But I have V8 power. Lockers front and back, spring over suspension, 38 super swamp. It's a lot of fun. This says uh, wise women of, of Haiti. So I've been working with the diesel engine uh, concept for the last 10 years. Uh, a lot of it has been from the times we've been going down to Haiti for the last 10 years, working with uh, what kind of vehicle would be the best one for us. The suitable engine I chose was a 4VT, which is worldwide. It's, it's a European engine style engine. Comes a lot of red trucks, very common, parts are easy to get, so that was my decision on that. So we uh, made our own motor mounts, designed them in Haiti, uh, had the Jeep down there for four years, um, and uh, just to try to see how it would go, and it's been, it's been great. It's a lot of torque, and I, I take a lot of mission people back and forth to the airport, or do a lot of different things up in the high elevations and with coffee, and so, basically started with emissions thing and I've come back with it and say okay now I, get, I got a good design for the engines and the motors and we start putting them in the, the Jeeps around here so I've been doing uh, CJ's, YJ's, TJ's, haven't done any JK's yet but and getting all the electrical components of Mary up so we've been able to work with it and um, it's an engine of choice as far as I'm concerned for the ease of you know the parts to get and put it in and the torque and uh, but I know there's other engines that are coming out there that are probably more suitable, more quiet. This works great with a frame that doesn't do so good with a uh, uh, something that would have subframes to it and a little vibrating, you know. So the engine it takes a little while to get used to something like that. When I'm in Italy, you know, they'll have uh, diesel engines in a Lexus. So you can see a Lexus pull up and it's rattling, you know, it's like, uh, they don't seem to mind, but, you know, we seem to mind it here and what the kind of sound is. Until we get used to not having gas engines, we'll, We'll see what it is to have better economy. The economy in the engine gets anywhere from my, I've had anywhere from 28 to 38 miles to the gallon. Add water injection to it, alcohol water injection, so it really makes a difference. And uh, yeah. so about third year, fourth year into this, I know that we're probably making the Cummins coming out with a 3.3. There's other engines out there I know until they're more readily available. You know, this is one. But I know there'll be other ones in the near future that we'll put them in. So it doesn't matter what it is, we can we can put it in there. It's just that this is the choice for right now. I was down during the earthquake down in Haiti, and the doctor called me when I was down up in the states, and she asked I was okay. I said, yeah, it's fine. She goes, oh, you got to build me one of those jeeps now because I have another one of these down there, tan. It's a tan one. It's working great. It depends on the customer's requirements, the customer's needs. Are going to go trailer with it? Are going to rock crawl? Right. And then that would be determined how we're going to build it. These are the things that. You know, we try to specify with our guys, you know, we, we don't build things for ourselves, we build them for what people want to have, or what they need to have, or what, sometimes they don't know what they need to have, so they'll, they'll ask questions and we'll figure it out together. Sometimes they'll have an, an idea of what they need, think they need to have, and we'll, if, if I have to, I'll change it, <laughs> let them know what they need to have. 
This is where I normally work down in this area. Here's Port au Prince here. You should have seen. We were here and felt it. The, the ground moved six feet here. Wow. The cloud of smoke, dust, you could not. And then at night, after the earthquake at night, you could, when we took pictures, it looked like it was snowing because all of the concrete dust was in the air. Oh my God. And we were like 40 miles away. So. Did you actually have when the quake happened? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we sent our doctors and nurses in. We went in to help, you know, after the, right after the earthquake. And you can only imagine the devastation, people missing limbs and stuff like that. It's crazy. But, you know, it's what they live through. And you have night, I have nightmares at night about here. People, you know, screaming and carrying on, you know. And uh, we, you know, buried a lot of people's children. There's a lot of that. But so, I put this together. People want to do service trips or whatever, and what we've been working with is, you know, replantation of coffee and, you know, putting things back into uh, the ground. Fifty cents a seed turns into ten dollars in three years. Can you imagine? What an Jeez. investment! Yeah, right. What an investment! So it has um, the uh, inverter and stuff they need for the uh, ultrasound machines and a right. computer and a refrigeration for medicines, and they also are uh, uh, in, they're training women for, for delivery. So once this vehicle goes to Haiti, it will never see a hard road. And then I have uh, either do one or two coil spring shocks to get, you know, keep the lift up. You know what I mean? Awesome. So you actually have, you can do one shock, two shocks, two coils, one coil, whatever you need to do. Depending, again, it depends on the needs of, the, of what, they, what they're doing. Where I go, I would run two shocks, two coils with two shocks, two coils. And, uh, what they're doing here, they're not going to weigh it down like I would do in places I go, right. and uh, some of the extreme. So it has versatility of how it should be built. Jack Cohen from the Butler County Tourism and Convention Bureau. We're out here today to talk about our big Jeep event next year, which is a Jeep Heritage Festival, the Bantam Jeep Heritage Festival in Butler, Pennsylvania. We want people to know about the rich history of Jeep, and that's why we got this truck behind me here to talk about that and help promote and market the event. Uh, we found it online. It was a it was a brush truck, and it was on a government website, and we bought it without even seeing it. And you can tell we restored it. And now we have a vehicle wrap on there to talk about all the wonderful things you can do in Butler County, PA. Again, that's, the, that's where the Jeeps began. And the old factory is still standing. And we think that the history is amazing. And we want to share that with everybody. So we want everyone to come. They had uh, built over 1,500 of the original Jeeps. And then Willys and Ford got involved. And the government uh, gave the contracts at that point to those folks because they didn't think that Bantam could mass produce the vehicles fast enough for their need and then they lost the contract. But the very first ones were, the contract came to Bantam Car Company in Butler, PA. And that's how it started. And we want people to know about that rich history. We've got some people that built them and talk about them and share their story. And it'll be a great fun time in Butler next year, on August 12th, 13th, and 14th. Some of the other things we do have off-roading on site, we'll have a history pavilion and we've got stuff for kids, lots of food and fun. And we've got nearby park, which is Moraine State Park. We'll have a four-mile loop inside where we can take Jeeps. And it'll be off-roading adventure there. And the event is August 12th, 13th, and 14th of 2011. It starts that Friday night with the world's largest Jeep parade that we'll have by Guinness. And uh, we want at least 3,500 Jeeps. So come on out and have some fun.